Hello. Hello. Just wanted to take a quick second to share that we started a sailing school last summer. And in that time, we've taught about 150 people how to sail, which has been so much fun to meet so many of you face to face and spend time on the water together. So we're doing it again this summer in Lake Tahoe. It's a four day consecutive course and we teach on Catalina 22s, which are really good to learn on because they're really responsive and you're learning in paradise in Lake Tahoe. Yep. So bookings are available now. So head on over to cruisersacademy.com to snag your spot before it all fills up. We're excited to see some of you out there on the lake this summer and back to the episode. This is what people come to the Galapagos for. This is like, I heard about Wolf and Darwin 13 years ago when I started diving and like, this is it. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about how many sharks are underwater around these islands. And yeah, I can't believe we're actually here. The crew of the Tiburon Explorer had navigated the ship overnight, about 140 nautical miles northwest, to one of the most iconic dive destinations on Earth, Wolf Island. Traveling at about 10 knots meant our arrival was timed perfectly for us to wake up and witness the wild beauty of this remote Pacific island. Wolf Island, named after the German geologist Theodor Wolf, is an extinct submarine volcano whose peak emerges from the ocean to form the 1.1 square mile island we see today. Coupled with Darwin Island, which lies just north of Wolf, this diving mecca is notoriously difficult to get to because of its remote location and strict permitting. And while the human population of these islands is zero, Wolf is home to thousands of birds who were putting on a show for us as we approached our anchorage. It felt like a dream to finally be at Wolf Island. So we pulled aside one of our dive guides, Paulo, to help us learn a bit more. I'm, my name is Paulo, Paulo Tobar, and I'm a diving instructor. This is my office, as you can see, <laughs> very nice office. So yeah, I have like um, almost 15 years working diving. Uh, most of the time in day trips, based in town, and I have the last four years working on liverworts around Wolf and Darwin, which is amazing. If you could be one animal in the ocean, what would it be? Probably a dolphin. <laughs> yeah, a shark is kind of a stress because you know, it's, it's a top predator and you must be hunting all the time. But dolphin is like kind of a fun life, you know? They jumping out, they playing together all the time, they making nice noise, so probably a dolphin. Good answer. <laughs> you know dolphins are one of the only other animals besides monkeys and humans that have sex for fun? Oh! Another reason to be a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us about this island a bit? Okay, Wolf Island, uh, this Two dive sites are the farthest north in the archipelago and are the sharkiest place on earth. There is a lot of life that visit all these places, this northern island that is rich of uh, food. That's why we got a lot of action in this place. Not just sharks, it's the amount of fish, the amount of sea turtles, 
here is amazing. You see, in one dive, probably sometimes like 40, 50 turtles. They wow. all over the place, resting, swimming in the blue, passing really close to you. So it's like amazing experience. The action here is wildlife actually in action. Yeah, it's not like ah, oh, just look the shark. You see animals hunting. You see animals playing. You see animals that. The interaction of them is really nice. Are these islands patrolled by by the Galapagos or the Ecuadorian Navy? Exactly. Galapagos National Park is working together with the Navy, so they have a very good control around these areas. So can you can you talk to us a bit about the situation with the big fishing boats sitting all around the perimeter of the Aha. protected area? Yeah, the illegal fishings around, like. The profile of the marine reserve. So, how, how big is the circumference of the protected area? Uh, 40 miles protected. From the coast of all the islands, then you have 40 miles protected away. That's so not much. There's not much. I think probably some of them sometimes come inside, which is really hard control. But the local governments try to expand the marine reserve just to make a huge protected area. But for sure, once they go out of the marine reserve, they have these illegal fishing boats that are taking everything that is just passing by. And it's danger for uh, these species. For sure, the population decreased. During the pandemic, uh, fishing, uh, fishing boats, they were almost at the line of the protected area. The migratory species, it's easy to catch as soon as they move out of the marine reserve. Yeah, the Ecuadorian Navy, yeah, they're doing a lot of control here. And what happens if they catch a, a boat inside the reserve? They give uh, them a fine? Or? Exactly, they're gonna take the boat and uh, there was one that they took in the marine reserve uh, four years ago around. So the boat now is part of the Navy. Yeah, they took the boat and what? now it's part of the Navy. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they found a lot of sharks in there, so uh, it's something like really hard. They were they were that was sad for for the environment to find like tons of sharks dead on the ship. So yeah, they they took the boat and then bring back to Guayaquil, and the Navy have now that boat for control. Yeah, around. amazing Jurassic Park cliffs with birds that remind me of pterodactyls. It's just amazing. Does it remind you of any other place you've ever been? Like if you combine a couple places or totally unique? It's totally unique. Yeah, uh, it really is. Um, the rock formations, the birds, it's special because we're here when the, when the greenery, because it's been raining, is present. Uh, normally it's more white rock. So that just the color spectrum from the iron ore deposits to yellow to all the crazy birds along the, the cliffs up here. It's, yeah, it's like nothing else I've seen. Before our dinghy got completely taken over by sea lions, it was time to rally inside, get a dive briefing from Paolo, and chat about safety. Uh, hard to say. Normally it could be like two or three knots. That is like kind of easy. But sometimes you can get like so yeah, yesterday they gave us some additional safety equipment. Um, I've never actually dove with any of these things, so I, I woke up in the middle of the night a little bit nervous, but definitely better to have these because the current can be so strong. So they gave us this device, which is kind of an air horn. Um, it just hooks up to our spare air, where we can normally inflate our VCDs. And basically if you press, press it, it's like an air horn. So if you do get separated from the group or something like that and you are on your own, 
you can just put your ears underwater, press the air horn, and then um, the panga will come get you. So that's nice. We also have uh, these flags, but it's just a dive, dive flag that kind of pieces together. You can send it up in the air. And then this one is like very backup, backup insurance policy, but it's basically a GPS um, unit that you just clip to yourself. And if you need to set it off, uh, if you get really separated and the air horn and the flag aren't, aren't uh, getting their attention enough, you can activate the GPS that has a little antenna that flips out and then it sends the information to the captain. Um, so if we do get lost, they're gonna find us, but uh, I don't know, it'll be interesting because I'm like, with that much current, it's we have to hold onto the rocks and then film and there's a lot of drag on the cameras and we have to stay together. So there's a lot going on, so just definitely gonna stay calm and yeah, all stay together and get whatever shots we can get. Feelings? That's what we came here for, Blue. That's it. Yeah. I love dives like this where you can just stop and sit and let the animals come to you. Yeah. It's a test in patience for sure. Yeah, definitely. But we're in good hands. Let's see what we see down there. The first of many dives of this island. Are you excited? Nervous? Very excited. Are you nervous at all or no? No, I like, I try and get into a sort of a zen state. Better for your air, so try and keep those nerves at bay. Good idea. But inside, kind of like fun, excited. Yeah. Now for anyone who isn't a sailor or a diver and can't quite imagine what five to six knots of current feels like, let me tell you, this is gonna be a wild ride. If you've done some diving before, you know that one of the golden rules of scuba is that you never touch anything underwater. But in this situation, we did have to hold on to the lava rocks because the moment you let go, you were going downstream, away from the group with no way of getting back up current. So we held on tight and just waited because strong currents mean nutrient-rich waters which means it was only a matter of time for the sea life to show up to the party.
Paolo was not exaggerating when he said you could see 40 or even 50 turtles on each of these dives. And to get this up close and personal with them was such a unique experience. We got to watch them eat, hide under rocks to escape the current for a nap, and try to kiss themselves in their reflection of our big underwater camera domes. I promise I did not swim into this turtle. He swam straight into me before I could move out of his way. Then this little badass came along, who had a pretty mangled fin, but was still making do. We guessed she was a survivor of a shark or orca attack, but had somehow made it out alive. Next up, we found this massive school of barracudas. And you guessed it, more turtles. Then, as if on cue, the dolphin noises began to get louder. And as we headed up for our safety stop, some visitors swam by to give the perfect ending to our Wolf Island dives, which will forever be some of the most radical I've ever been on. Talk to me, Brady. Oh, that dive worked me. <laughs> I got bashed into so many rocks and mask was a little bit foggy and it was crazy. <laughs> okay, well, don't mean that if y'all think you're gonna say about that dive. <laughs> Yo, it's like a video game. The current's so strong, you're just like holding onto a rock, the current ripping past your face and then like filming other people fly by and then you're like, okay, whee! If I didn't seem quite as stoked as Blue, it was because I hadn't yet told her my dive housing flooded during that dive. I was on a dive just now with quite a bit of current sloshing around and I looked at my camera from the back and <laughs> water inside just a little bit, but I immediately called the dive and came up to the dive boat to the dinghy. I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't hit the camera, but... Uh. Did my camera survive? You'll find out in the next episode of our journey through the Galapagos. What you got going there, senor? No drones, no problem. <laughs> cha cha cha. The birds love it. What's that? The birds love it. They like, come up and bump into it and then shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Tell me about your new company, Brady. And I'm paying for it. I'm gonna fill up these with my spit and I'll call it senior spits and stuff. Yeah.
and, and I'll stuff. pay for it. And I'll stuff. pay for it. It works out. Yeah, it does. <laughs> in your sweets and stuff, but you don't want to know what the stuff is. What else is in there? You don't want to know. The stuff. It's a secret. It's a secret.